I recently received an email from a past delegate. Phoebe wanted to know if it was possible to have a polygon layer conditionally formatted, and on top of that polygon layer, to have a bubble layer formatted off of different data. In this video, we're going to cover how to add your postcodes as a location onto the Azure Map Visual, where to source a UK region polygon layer, how to link your two sets of data together using an ID, and then how to apply conditional formatting to that polygon layer linked to your data. If you'd like to follow along, the files are linked below. Let's begin. The first thing we'll need then is the data. I'm going to go up to Excel workbook, go to my desktop and pull in this sales data file. I'll tick the table. This is a fairly simple file. We have some sale IDs, a price, the shopping centre the sale was made in, the type of centre that we're looking at, the postcode, the town, the region, and the region ID. I'll load this in. And then as good practice, I'll rename the table. Sales data. Now I want to create my Azure map. I'm going to come down to the fourth row, fourth column, the blue arrow, and give it a click. Resize it. And the first part we want is to create the dots. Go to the sales data and put the postcode into the location. Now what we're not going to do is we are not going to use the legend. If we use the legend, it will affect both the dots and the polygons. Instead, go to the paintbrush at the top of visualizations, come down to the bubble layer, come down to colors, click on the FX of colors. Now we've got it set to format style rule. We've also got gradient and field value. Since I don't have the colors already set up in a column, I'm going to go with rules. Which column would I like to set this based on? Use the drop down. Go to the all data section, expand your table. And we want to use our type of center. This says the first type of center, but since each postcode only has one, it is returning type of center for that postcode. I'm going to say if this is retail and then choose my color. I'm going to go with purple. Repeat this for each of our values. Retail, center, park, outlet and then choose your colors. How very pastel. Click OK. Now we need our polygons. To do this, come back over to your visualization pane, back to the paintbrush, minimize bubble layer, and come down to reference layer. To pull in the data, there's two options, file upload and URL. We're going to use file upload. Click on browse. Come to the bottom right and use the file type dropdown. Power BI reference layers support several spatial formats, GeoJSON, JSON, ZIP, KML, CSV, WKT, we're going to use a shape file. Cancel out of here for the moment. Open up your browser. In the UK, we have the ONS, the Office for National Statistics. They have a website called the GeoPortal. Go to Boundaries, 
we want an administrative boundary by region 2024 boundaries. I'm going to go with the top one. This looks good. On the left hand side, choose download. We're going to need two things. We want the shapefile download, but we also want the CSV. The CSV is going to contain the data that allows us to link our data to the shapefile data. Switch back to Power BI. Up the top, go to Get Data. And the file format was a CSV. Go to your downloads and import the CSV file. If your region names in the data match up perfectly to the regions here, we won't need to do anything else. Unfortunately, mine don't. So what I need to do is add a way of linking these two together. Let's choose transform data. There are two ways that we could do this. The first way would be to make sure our regions match each of these. The problem with that is if our data is reliant on those region columns, it could cause problems with any other data we pull in. So instead, if you go through to the sales data, we have this region ID code. I'm going to assign these regions onto the regions in the CSV file. To do this, Go into your region CSV file, go to add column, conditional column, and I'll rename this one to region ID. Use the drop down and column name and choose the column we want to test against, RGN24NM. I want to see if this is equal to north, east. Annoyingly, when I add a clause, it resets everything. So we have to work our way through and add each of these. I'll come back in a moment when I've done this. And we're back. Now we need to match these up to our original Excel file. Open your Excel file up. Each of the regions has its own ID. So East of England is one. East Midlands is two. Switching back into Power BI, I can put in the matching values. East of England, one. East Midlands, two. Repeat this for each of your areas. Once you've done this, your data should now have an ID next to every region. Click OK. At this point, you could pull in both tables, join them together, and use the data like that. I don't need this. The only column from this data set I actually want is this region name column. I'm going to pull that through to the other table using this region ID. That does mean that I will no longer need this table. On the left hand side, right click on your table and untick enable load. That will stop Power BI from loading this into the front end. Switch to your sales data table. Go to the home tab. On the far right, choose Merge Queries. There are two options. 
Merge queries will combine the data into this table. Merge queries as new would create a third separate table. I want the first option, Merge queries. From the top table, choose which column you want to overlap. Think of it like an XLV lookup. This is the value from this table I want to match to the other table. Use the drop down. Choose your other table. Scroll in the data and choose the column that will overlap, in this case region ID. I can see the selection has matched every row out of my first table. So every sale has a corresponding region. Click OK. This will give us a preview of the other table. This column won't actually do anything, so if I did close and apply, this column would not appear in the front end. Let's use the icon in the top right hand corner to expand the data. Expanding will give us the data next to the corresponding rows. Aggregate would allow you to use aggregate functions like sum, min and max. As I said before, we don't need all of these. Untick select all. And the only column we actually need is the region names. In truth, you could actually use any of the unique columns from this data. I could have pulled in the FID or the RGN24CD, but I think the names makes most sense. Come down the bottom and untick use original column name as a prefix. I don't want my already strange name, RGN24NM, to be prefaced by regions, blah, 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 the entire table name. Untick and click OK. In the top left hand corner, choose Close and Apply. Now our data has been added, and if you look on the right hand side, the new column appears in place. Now we want to pull in our reference layer. On the visualizations pane, click on the paintbrush, come down to reference layer. Data source, file upload, and click on upload a file, browse. Choose your file type. I went for the shape file. Click open. After a second, our polygons will appear. Scroll down in the reference layer. Come down to polygons. Click on the FX of the fill color. Now we can apply some conditional formatting. Up the top left, change from rules to gradient. What field should we base this on? Use the drop down, sales data. If we were using two separate tables, I could now choose data from the region table. We combined the tables though, so that we'd be able to bring in price. I'd like there to be three colors, so I'm going to tick add a middle color. Change each of your colors to what you'd like to see. Click OK. If nothing happens, we may need to give this a nudge. At the top of the visualizations pane, click on the first icon, the field well. In the location, we can see our postcode. Drag in your linking column, so the RGN24NM. Drag that into the location. Then remove it. This gives Azure the kick it needs to link the two files together. And there we have it, a conditionally formatted set of bubbles on top of a conditionally formatted polygon layer. I hope you found this helpful and thanks again for Phoebe for their great question. See you in the next one.